Okay, now you have a few keywords and maybe even a couple of subject headings. Generally, you're going to have to combine these in some way to actually perform your search. When using Google, you usually just type in a few keywords and you don't worry about using anything to combine the terms. You can do this with databases too, but your search will be even better if you use these magical combining words called Boolean operators. There are three, and, or, not and they're usually associated with an image like this one. If you've ever learned about Boolean before, you've probably seen something similar. It's called a Venn diagram, and it's just a visual way of showing you how these terms can narrow, expand, or limit your search so you find just what you need, not one million hits. When you use the AND operator, you're narrowing your search. You use AND with terms that are not similar, like libraries and dogs. When you use OR, you widen your search. This is great to use for synonyms like cars or automobiles. NOT excludes something from your search. NOT is great to use when you have words that are spelled the same but have totally different meanings, like bat, not, baseball, if you're searching for the nocturnal flying creatures versus the bat related to sports. NOT is actually not used very often as it can exclude perfectly good articles, so be careful if you do use it. Let's do an example using one of my favorite foods of all time, guacamole. Let's use the AND operator first. Avocado and tomato and lime juice. Guacamole pretty much must have these three ingredients, which limits either where I can order it from or how I make it. Now for the OR, red onion or yellow onion. I really don't care what type of onion, so it gives me more options. Now for the NOT. I'm one of those people that can't stand cilantro. So I never use it when I make guacamole and I always make sure it gets excluded when I order it. Now, I am sure that I've missed out on perfectly tasty guacamole just because I won't eat cilantro. So just be cautious when you use not in your search. The guacamole example is delicious, but it's a little bit silly. So let's go back and see how Boolean works with a real search. When we use AND here, we're telling the database or catalog that we are only interested in books or articles that are about both female college athlete and eating disorders. Remember, AND makes your search smaller. So even though there may be 400 articles on female college athletes, and 2,000 articles on eating disorders, you might only get 25 when you combine the two. Let's try an OR search. This will make your search bigger. Remember, these are good to use with similar terms. So college or university. If you search on college or university, you'll be telling the catalog or database that you don't care which it brings back, college or university. Either is fine. So if there's 2,000 articles with the term college and 2,000 articles with the term University, if you combine the two, you're up to 4,000 because it actually will add them. Makes your search bigger. Clear as mud? No worries. Many databases make it quite easy to use Boolean, as I'll show you in the next couple weeks. And don't tell the librarian mafia, but you can run a perfectly good search without using the ands and ors and so on. But you can definitely run an awesome search by using them. Okay, let's talk about some handy tips and tricks. Many of you are probably already using the top trick, putting the phrase in quotes. This can reduce the overwhelming amount of information you find, and what you find will be much more focused. Truncation is a funny word, but a very good way to expand a search. Many databases allow you to put a symbol at the end of a word or within a word to search on different variations. In this first example, child with a question mark or child with an asterisk will look up child children, childhood, so on. Different databases have different symbols. Just look in their help section. You can also use a symbol within a word to find variations like woman or women. Just be careful not to over truncate a word. Anything less than four letters tends to bring up too much stuff. Trying to truncate clone to C-L-O with the symbol will bring up a bunch of words not at all related to clone or cloning. Proximity helps you find words that are close together. Again, different databases have different ways to search this. EBSCO uses the N with a number. The number is how far apart the words can be. In this case, I'm asking the database to find instances where cilantro and terrible are within five words of each other. 
it doesn't matter which order the words appear. They just have to be within five words. This could be cilantro is the most terrible tasting herb ever, or many can't stand the terrible taste of cilantro. Google also has a proximity search. They use the word in all capital letters around with the number. Even I don't use proximity searching that much, but it is so handy when you do need it. Watch the following demo to see an example using Boolean and truncation to search the library catalog. The concept of Boolean and truncation starts to make a lot more sense if you can see an actual example. I'm going to go to the ISU library catalog and do a search on bullying in children. So I go to library quick links again and down to catalog. Now first I'm going to type in the word bully. I want to search for bully and bullying, so I'm going to shorten this word. Remember, the library catalog uses the question mark as the truncation symbol. Most everything else in the world uses asterisk. So again, you can always just look to the help file to figure that out. But bully is only my first concept. I also want the second concept of children. Now it's time to add my Boolean operator of and, because I want to find books that talk about both bullying and children. And now for my second concept, which is child. And I'm going to put child and since I want to find childhood, children, child, I'm going to shorten this to just child and then it will look for other variations. The last thing to do is select the keyword Boolean option over here. That allows us to search using the Boolean terms. Now let's just search. So 67 books or entries or other items. That's pretty good, honestly. What you can do is also play with this. So maybe you want to shorten this to even shorter so you can get bullies. Just be careful with that. I'll show you. The shorter you go, the more you get. All right, so that bumped us up to almost 500 entries. And if you start browsing through it, you can see not a great deal of it is as specific as we want. So just watch out for that when you get over truncated because then it starts pulling up stuff that's not as relevant. Now, I don't expect you to master the concept of Boolean and truncation right away. We're going to be playing with both of these concepts the rest of the semester, so there's going to be plenty of time to practice. To review, after this week, I want you to be aware of keyword and subject heading searches, including what they are, how to do them, and how they differ. I also wanted to introduce you to the concept of Boolean searching and how these words can help with your search. So, you feel like you can search like a boss now or what?